So hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thanks for logging in. We are here for Smart Water Wednesdays, and the subject today is Budget Monitor one of the less known or less frequently used features on the WeatherTrack platform. Wanted to highlight some of the features, talk about what it is and how to use it. Uh, I have a very special guest this week. Eric Anderson is an old hey. friend of HydroPoints and um, is the uh, district sales manager. Is that right, Eric? That is correct. District sales manager in Southern California for Site 1. Uh, Eric has been at many, many HydroPoint meetings that I've attended. Uh, we, in the halls of HydroPoint, lovingly call him the dude. And uh -oh. everybody knows who you're talking about when you're talking about the dude. Uh, years and years of weather track experience. And so he will be a great uh, guest. Let me go back to the cameras and show your face. There we go. Say hey. hi, everybody, Eric. Hey, how's it going today? Um, and the reason that I think that you were a great guest for this kind of feature set that uh, needs a great guest uh, is because you live in a part of the world where water restrictions are more strict than I see in other parts of the country. That is to say, here in Colorado, water restrictions tell us that we can only water Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they think that's good enough. Where you're at, you have restrictions where they actually give you a water budget that you need to hit. Is that right? That is correct. And so tell me how that works. Tell me what that looks like in practice for your contractors. Well, oftentimes I have uh, uh, clients that ha have a uh, work in like a tiered rate water system and they have to be under a second tier or they pay a severe penalty in the water rates. So they want to set up like a water budget that they can achieve and they would like the system to be able to notify them when they're going to go over budget to avoid penalties. So that is exactly the wheelhouse of the budget monitor and exactly what we want to talk about today. So um, great lead in, thank you. Uh, we are going to drill into the weather track feature called budget monitor and we're going to talk about what it is and how to use it. Specifically, um, when we talk about the budget monitor, it really is focused on either the water bill or water budget data. Um, and I was always, my dad is an economics teacher and talks about budgets a lot. And he says that when you're talking about budgets, there's two things you need to keep in mind. There's the making of a budget and the keeping of a budget, right? Two separate steps. How much do I want to use? And then how much did I actually use in comparison to that? So we'll talk about the, that concept with the budget monitor, with the budget monitor. How do I uh, create a meter and track the bills on a water meter? How do I set budgets? And then how do I compare that budget to my actual usage and check my progress? Um, just like a bank account, we just want to check and make sure, see how much water we have left in the budget. Um, so that is where we're going to go. And let me just pull up the demonstration. Oh, I was already playing with it. Um, we'll start on the home screen. When you log into weathertrack.net, you'll always land on the home page. Um, and the budget monitor is what we're talking about today. And I think that a very compelling way to talk about that. Uh, to start the conversation is to look at some of the reporting that the budget monitor can produce. Um, just like the OptiFlow and other features we've discussed in the past, uh, budget monitor has a whole lot of reports that go along with it. So you can go in and as a water manager, let me blow this up a little bit. As a water manager, you can go in and um, produce reports that are compelling to your customers, right? You have customers that have that water budget that Eric was talking about, and you can go in and um, measure their progress, look at their water bills, look at their budgets and see where they're in budget, where they're over budget. In this example that I pulled, everything is over budget, um, but you can really track their usage and get a good feel for how they're doing um, in accordance with the restrictions that they're facing or staying on target for um, their allocation. 
It can also log in and see as part of this report that I think is really, really nice, where that, how that money on their water bill is being spent. So they can go in and plug in the price of water and see how much of their water is actually being used to water their grass, to water their trees, you know, just break down the actual facts and figures on how we're using that water. Um, so lots of great information here that I wanna show you how to get to, okay? Um, let's, let me, before I do that, let me check and make sure, no questions. Is there anything in the question box? Nope. Okay, keep those questions coming. If you have questions, shout them out. All right, so the first step in tracking, what we wanna do is talk about water bill data. And um, the first step in setting up a water bill is to actually put a water meter on your map, to put a water meter into the system. So we go to the water meter list and, or we go to the budget monitor tab and the water meter list and add a new water meter to the water meter list. And so you go in here and you set that up, you got the, you name that water meter, likely you'll have a meter number that comes off of the water bill and just collect a little information about that meter. What type of meter is it? Specifically, is it an irrigation only meter, which we see? Eric, is that something that you have a lot of? Oh yeah, yeah, we have a lot of irrigation only meters, but we also have combined too. So, and it's, that's part of the challenge, right? Have you ever tried to, um, let's see, let me go back. Have you ever tried to calculate out a, a mixed meter? Have you ever been faced with the challenge of figuring out what irrigation water lives on a mixed meter? Uh, yes, but I believe that's more of a water compass discussion. Would that be fair to say? That's fair to say, for sure. Like that mixed meter happens. And in Denver, it's really easy because on a mixed meter, um, we don't have irrigation for five months of the year. So I can oh. just subtract December out and not have any. And we don't have, we don't have that basis. problem then. No, you're year round. So I was wondering <laughs> if you had done that and if you had tips or tricks on how to do that. Mm. Not, not, not too many offhand. Okay, then we'll go back uh, and we're gonna go. Um, so first thing we do is set up a water meter. When you uh, set up a water meter after you're done, you got go in here and you'll have your whole list of water meters. And this is just my demo account. And clearly I've done this a number of times. Um, so I'll just choose a water meter and we're gonna go onto this guy and you can see what it looks like once the water meter has been fully registered, right? You can go in here and all that stuff that we just entered in, um, the meter type, the meter number, it all lives on this meter. Once you've done that, you can go in and start to add water bill data. And let's just start, you can actually do that from here, but um, ongoing, I would log into the water bill list, right? If I was just a user, go into the water bill list and add new water bill. And the first thing that they have you do here is select the meter that we wanna add a bill to. And you go in here and you say, all right, I want to use this bottom meter way down here. Select the meter and it brings up a template where you can extract the necessary information or the pertinent information out of the water bill. So you put in here your, let's see if I can blow that up a little bit. A little easier to read. Go in and put it in the, uh, reading of the meter, the date that they read the meter, and the date that they sent the statement, right? So you can track all of that and compare it against the, the previous bills, what the meter reading was and how many days that represented, and then go in and really drill down on not only usage or consumption, but um, cost, right? So not only are we tracking the gallons, but we're tracking the dollars. Um, and 
we kind of got into this, just separating it out is really um, figuring out what the water bill has in terms of indoor usage and outdoor usage. If you don't have an irrigation meter specifically, we give you the tools to try and flesh that out and try and really just isolate what we as irrigation water managers um, are dealing with and the, the control the things that we can control. Does that make sense, Eric? Yes, yes it does. Okay. Now just, just, just to be clear, Ben, you, when you set this up, you're initially going in and taking your water meter data and entering it in to Absolutely. set your baseline. Absolutely, so you go in, you set up your water bill or your water meter first, and then we attach all of these bills directly to that meter. They're all tied together so you can track it ongoing through time. Ooh, I got a question, let's see. Can you do tiered rates? Oh, that is a good question, Chad Sutton. Um, and currently we don't have the ability to do tiered rates. The way that I do that is you have to go in and adjust once you bump up onto the next tier. Um, you have to adjust the cost that you're paying, um, which is what I've done with customers in the past, but that is a feature that we are looking to enhance next time we revisit the budget manager. Um, awesome question, keep going. All right, I think that's uh, all. Oh, the one thing I did wanna show you for water bill data is back here on the water bill list. Um, I like the template. I, because I'm a right brain guy, numbers and spreadsheets aren't really my thing. But um, if you are trying to enter in a backlog of water data, um, it is nice that you can go in here and edit all and manage it more like a spreadsheet, right? Instead of using the template that helps you extract all of the right information, you go in here and it just gives you the spreadsheet that you can just boom, 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 enter it all in, right? And if you're savvy like that, it's a great way to use it. Um, get a lot of information in very quickly. All right, um, moving on. So once we have the water bill information in there, we can really start to use the budget details or the budget monitor as it's designed to use. And this I think is kind of the, a day in the life. This is really what I would look at. So I would come in here and the budget details are designed to be able to actively measure, to use this on a daily basis. So I can um, basically just apply what they call metrics. I can go in and add lines on the graph. I think of metrics as just lines on the graph and I can make those water bills lines on the graph and CCFs don't really mean anything to me. So I like to look at it in gallons because I know what a gallon looks and feels like, um, but you always wanna make sure that your budget monitor information matches your water bill information. You always wanna make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Um, and so you go in here and you can make it line graphs or bar graphs. You can identify um, exactly make sure that the information that you're seeing lines up. Um, and you can see right here, my baseline usage in 2013, um, compared to my 2014 usage, I saved 21%, right? So it makes it very easy to track and see the progress that you're making in your water management project. Um, now, water bills are only one of the things that we can use on this graph. Um, so water bill data is the empirical data that I love, but um, another way to use this is to enter a water budget. So I can go in here and I can say, um, I can set up different water budgets. I can detail. I've set these guys up just as examples, but we can juggle as many as three different budgets that a user might like. Um, so I've got my pre-weather track baseline as an example. Here's what I was using before we even put weather track in. It's a, always a good basis for comparison. Um, I let, I use the target irrigation baseline, like what do I actually want to use? And 
um, weather normalized? What, what does it look like when, um, if I adjust it for the weather? So you can do this. Um, another great way of managing that is what tier one looks like and what tier two looks like. Um, so to Eric's point on that tiered structure, um, you can see where you are and compare yourself to um, what those rate structures and what those actual budgets and allocations look like. And so you can go in here and to set up one of those budgets, the first thing we do is click that manage budget and outline it. Just define what that budget is for yourself. And then we go in and once it's active on your timeline, we can go in and identify uh, both, again, gallons and dollars, what we're spending and what we're using out on site. And so, Eric? Uh, uh, ben, is, is there a way for the controller to notify you if you're getting ready to exceed budget or get close to budget? Uh, that is not... <laughs> Uh, there, there isn't an active alert. So this is just meant for monitoring. So you can log in, you can go in and say, I'm 50% of the way through the month. Uh, I'm 70% of the way through the water. Um, another thing that we are looking at when we renovate, that, that's a common piece of feedback. Hey, I want, I have a million gallons to use. I wanna know when I'm 50%, 75%, 90% of the way there um, is kind of, uh, the alerts is, that we are looking at. Go ahead. Is, is there any plan for the budget information to be available like on the app? So when I'm in the field, I can take a look at the phone and say, hey, this site is getting ready to exceed budget. Wow. Um, I don't know the answer to that. You're the first one. That, did I stump you? Yeah, I'm stumped on that one, <laughs> but I'm definitely taking that to the engineers. That's a great idea to be able to just have a widget in the app. Hey, Here's the site budget and here's the site usage. Well, e either some kind of notification or, you know, something on your phone that shows you you're getting ready to exceed budget and, and you know, make it a little easier. Right, totally. Um, so what we do is we go in here and just very quickly, I'm just taking whatever values are in here. We make this the water budget. Let's see, we're gonna give June a ton here. So you go in and put these numbers in and then you can do dollars too, right? It is designed to be both gallons and dollars um, so that when you have a budget, you can then go in and compare against. So that's the pre-weather track baseline. Um, and I can go in here and use that as the metric that shows up on the graph. Boom. And it's going to be way, way off. Um, but I chose the wrong one. The other thing that you can do, um, other than the water bill and water budget data, the other metric that you can use is the information coming straight from the controller. Let's see if I can find one that has measured usage. None of my demos have active working flow sensors on them, so it's tough. But you can go in here and see um, the measured usage, which is coming straight from the flow sensor, right? That's the information that your flow sensor is collecting as you go. This is how that or that contractor in the field can see, hey, here's my budget and here's my up-to-date information. This will represent last night's irrigation and give you the ability to compare that to your budget. So you can just make that the line on the graph that um, you're looking at. Hey, I have a million gallons to use and I'm way down here. Um, this is just measured usage because we don't have good flow sensors. Um, we have to simulate those, but that's the, that's the meat and potatoes of it really is knowing which line on the graph you're looking at. If you wanna show your customer good water savings, here is your value in investing in WeatherTrack. They're only interested really in water bill data. So you can just put two water bills on the graph, say here's what you were before and here's what you are now and look at our 20% savings. Um, 
Where's HydroPoint going with this in the future? What are their plans with this in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. And we really see this as a, uh, as the direction that water management really wants to go. But uh, admittedly, it hasn't seen a lot of development because it hasn't seen a lot of feedback. We have the primary users right now are HydroPoint using this to show the customers. Um, and that's why I'm talking about it today. I really think it's a valuable, valuable tool that is kind of missed by most of the contractors because it doesn't play a role in their daily lives. And I think that as we switch to those budgets, as we switch to those targets that we're trying to hit, this will become more and more valuable. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I brought you in, Eric. Because... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think having that information available on your iPhone will be the difference in this thing being very popular or just being used in the internet. Okay. N nobody so, wants to go back to a desktop to access this information necessarily. It doesn't mean you don't want access to it, but I need to be able to pull it up on the phone in the field. Okay. That's valuable. I, I think that that makes a ton of sense. Uh, and, and just having a way to go in through the app and plug that information in even like, here's the water bill instead of waiting to go to weathertrack.net, right. what I paid, here's what I used. Or well, here's no. where you're at for the month. You've used, you know, 10,000 gallons to, you know, for the first 25 days of the month. I think that's awesome. Um, all right. I do see some questions. Sorry, I missed them. The dude. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's a rough crowd. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, Let's see. Found monthly is too late. I have the landscape crew measuring weekly. So oh, there you go. So Jerry is is measuring weekly out there. Um, and I think that that is where I, I totally agree. That's where that measured usage metric comes into play. So and we can go in. Uh, you don't have to jump into the manhole to get the meter reading. Which can. With that, being, with that being said, you could almost explore like daily. The thing is updating itself daily and sending the information down to the phone. Yeah, and, and the way that I would do that now is I would set up just a scheduled report. I would go in and say, show me my budget and show me my measured usage for the, for the month. Uh, in a scheduled report. So it just automatically generated and came to your inbox without having to log into weathertrack.net and do that. Not through the app yet, but still pretty automated, pretty easy to get to that information. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up here, Eric. I'm going to show a couple of the cool reports. Um, now that we've shown the data, this is my favorite report that we started with because it really allows you to drill in and um, see how much of your money <laughs> goes to that cool season turf, right? Like in this example, we have 79% of the water going to keep the cool season turf. And I think it is interesting to see that in dollars, right? That makes a, a different perspective on how we're using water when you can really tie that right back to the water bill. We also have the budget monitoring report. So if you're doing this as a contractor, let me blow this up a little bit, sorry. If you're doing this as a contractor and offering water management services portfolio wide, you can get a quick up-to-date report on how you're doing on all of your budgets. So this is maybe the one that you would have automatically come to you because you can see what the budget is. You can define what these columns are, right? You can say, here's the budget, here's the usage, and here's where we're at. Here's, we're over budget here. And you can see that site to site or meter to meter. Um, you can also compare budgets. This is where you, this is what I would take to a board meeting. I would go in and say here, this is where you can say, here's I've got 17 versus 18 right here, right? This is what we had baseline. This is what we used. Um, and it's easy to show the savings in that scenario. Um, and then we also have high level account level reports now. Um, so you can go in and see exactly what sites are doing. And, and if you monitor many sites, um, you can keep track of your budgets in that way. So 
lots of great tools here. Um, some great ideas from Mr. Anderson, how we can get that going. Uh, wait a minute, Eric Anderson. Uh oh, yes. Did you just see those reports that I was talking about? Well, actually, I was looking at the questions here. <laughs> Aha. The, and, I think and I, I see, might have left you in the dark. I uh, see an, an anonymous attendee has asked, can a budget be dynamic and automatic using daily micro zone ET to adjust the baseline budget? It's a tr almost a trick question. You think about that. I'm Can a budget it. be dynamic and automatic using daily micro zone ET to adjust a baseline budget? So what they are asking for is a calculated like uh, irrigation requirement based on their setting per day. a per day irrigation requirement. Is that by gallon? Not, yeah, um, not currently. Um, the weather track would represent that in its in its usage, obviously. Um, but there's a lot that would go into that calculation that we don't currently have the capacity to show. So we, um, but another great idea, a calculated landscape irrigation requirement as one of the lines on the graph. Um, it would take some serious data input, the square footage and all of that kind of stuff in my brain to kind of um, accurately do that for you. But certainly something that I will bring up with engineering. Um, and did I, I don't know that I showed you this, so I'm just revisiting this. The budget monitoring report is what I would be showing, I would subscribe to. I would go through here you can see all of the different sites that you manage. You can see your budget, see your actual usage, and then where you're at compared. So if I missed that, I'm sorry. Uh, you watched my face while I was talking to the reports. Um, all right, Eric Anderson. Yes, sir. We've only got a few minutes left, so now you're grilled. Um, I ask all of my guests, uh, what does WeatherTrack save you? Well, it saves me and my customers a lot of uh, time, money, and water. Time, money, and water. Do you have an example of what WeatherTrack saves you? Uh, are you looking for an actual dollar figure or no, like I'm a gallon for a story per From the Eric Anderson bag of stories. How, how are we making your guys more efficient? Or uh, do you have an actual dollar figure? If you have that, I would be interested. I lost him. Oh, what happened there? I'm back. You're back. I, I don't know if I lost you or you lost me, but. So, so anyway, yeah, Hydro Point not only saves my clients a lot of time and money, saves the uh, maintenance contractor a lot of time and money for making runs out to the job site, but uh, saves them a lot of water and lets them stay on budget within the tier great water systems out here. Okay, awesome. And let's see, I'm just now reading through. I think we did get those questions. Um, so I think we are on track. That's awesome. All right, so I'm going to jump back to the PowerPoint. We're going to share the screen. <laughs> now, hey, hey ben, ben, somebody somebody wants to know how they get your Yeti cup. <laughs> that was from the distributor summit that we had. You've got one, right? You guys don't have a clothing store where you sell this stuff? Coolers and Yeti cups, clothes? Check out my merch, right? <laughs> like and subscribe. Check out my merch. <laughs> um, as always, we're here to help. If you have questions about budget monitor or anything else weather track related, uh, always feel free to call us, our customer support team. You can email them at support at hydropoint.com. If you're looking for online resources, technical uh, documentation at the knowledge base, which is great step-by-step uh, -step troubleshooting kind of articles. Or if you are in Eric's position and you're looking for um, tech specs or le weather track literature that you can use in the sales process and get to know the products, um, that's all available at um, our website, hydropoint.com resources. And then there's training available both 
certified through the Learn Upon and lots and lots of stuff on YouTube, uh, enough that you would definitely be tired of my voice by the time you're done. I know that I am when I watch it. So um, tune in next week where we will talk about how to program flow sensors. This is a very common question. And Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan in the house. So uh, ever thrive landscape. Um, Jonathan is a great user, um, a contractor we've been working with for years and he helped me decide uh, on this topic. It's something that is near and dear to his heart. Um, and it is something that I face a lot. Hey, I just put in this weather track. I just put in this flow sensor. Now, how do I get that flow sensor programmed so I see the information accurately? Um, it's a huge step in the process is not only installing it right, but programming it right. And next week, we'll talk about how to get all that information into the weather track system and learn from Jonathan tips and tricks on how to get that done quickly and efficiently. Uh, awesome. Eric Anderson, I appreciate Great. you, man. Thanks well, thank for helping you. me with this. No problem. Uh, uh, and um, if you're watching out there, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week. I'm Ben Coffey, and I'll leave it to Eric to close us out. And I'm Eric Anderson, and uh, thank you very much for attending. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.